This is Celebrity MasterChef Australia. Welcome to the most famous kitchen in Australia. 18 celebrities, <laughs> head to head, athletes. Love to win, don't like to come second. Writers. I'm going to give it a red hot go, so watch out. Comedians. <laughs> fashion leaders. It's like going to the Olympics. I want the gold medal. State leaders. I get this smell. Oh my God. It's my sauce burning. Battling through the heat. Stop, stop. For a place in the finals. Is it good enough? Is it right? A tilt at the trophy. And title of Australia's first celebrity MasterChef. And $50,000 for their favourite charity. It's a big adrenaline rush just to be in here. So far, Kirk Pengilly showed his dessert skills. Pulling off a bomb Alaska. I love it. I really love it. And seeing off the disappointed Josh and Indira. Now I got my hopes up. Show us what you're made of. Kathleen, Michelle and Peter showed some flair as Kathleen's Filipino favourites gave her the early advantage. I could not believe it was me. But Michelle's splendid spatchcock secured her semi-final spot. I'm so excited. Now, three more celebrities prepare to do battle. Tonight. I'm doing a three course meal. Premier Anna Bly tries a triple whammy. Has she bitten off more than she can chew? Actor Simon Westaway. Simon's stressing me out. In his toughest role ever. Shit, now it's getting tricky. And Olympian Eamon Sullivan. He's really set himself a challenge. Only one will claw their way into the semis. I'm Eamon Sullivan. I've won a silver medal and two bronze medals at the Olympic Games, a gold medal at the Commonwealth Games, and I've held five world records. Swimming's my life, it's my biggest love, and the only thing that comes close to that is probably my love for food and creating some tasty dishes. When I was six, I broke my leg and couldn't stand the hospital food, and my mum uh, brought me in spinach pie every day, and it's still my favourite meal every time I go home. I love cooking and I want to show that to the whole of Australia and uh, I'm in it to win it. I don't do things in halves. Eamon Sullivan, welcome to the MasterChef kitchen. Thank you. You swim for a living. What are you doing right here in the kitchen? Diet's a big part of my life. So obviously cooking and, and being healthy, it's, that's where it started. But uh, you know, these days it's a luxury for me to eat something delicious and, and that's how I reward myself after a big week of training is either Fatty Friday, as I call it, or uh, save it for the weekend and cook for some friends. Uh, and what do you cook? Anything with meat is yeah. uh, a big part of my diet. And then things like gnocchi and, and things from doing it from the bare essentials oh, wow. and making it from So scratch. you've made your own gnocchi? Yep, and I'll plan to do that today, so hopefully it, I'll pull it off. Well, let's be quite honest, you know, a, a man that can cook can definitely attract the ladies. <laughs> is that the case? Oh, is that the case for you? <laughs> well, we can't chat about that. I mean, oh. it will take a while. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I, won't, of I, won't, I won't lie, it, it helps. Yeah. Eamon, let's meet who you're up against. I'm Simon Westaway. I'm an actor. They say all the world's a stage, and so is my kitchen. I really love acting and it's a creative medium and I think cooking is the same, it's about creating something. When I grew up in a suburb in Melbourne called Box Hill North, I was surrounded by Italian people. I got taught to cook by the Italians, that was always a good place to start. One of the things I like about cooking is that when I cook, I tend to be able to turn off anything else that's in my day and it's just focusing on that preparation of the food. Right, lads. For me, that's a lot of fun. Simon. Welcome to the MasterChef kitchen. Thank you very much. Played a lot of tough characters in your time. Latest, I suppose, Mick Gatto, the famous Melbourne identity. 
and restaurant lover to boot. Absolutely. Now, your first meeting with Mick was over lunch, wasn't it? It was. It was steak and eggs and chicken livers. Now, I understand from some of his friends and associates that you took a bit of risk there by trying to impersonate him as the meal went on. Is that true? Clearly, as an actor, you want to try and create the characteristics of that, that character. But clearly, when he could see me down the end of the table mirroring some of his behaviours, he was sort of going, OK, maybe this guy can do it, I don't know, you know? But, uh, yeah, it was a bit of fun. So, which characters come into the kitchen today? Simon Westaway, Mick Gatto, any of those other magnificent... Nah, definitely Westaway? Simon Westaway today. So let's meet the next contestant for this heat. I'm Anna Bly. I'm the Premier of Queensland, and many people don't know it, but I love to cook. I love everything about cooking. I love the smell, the look of it, and I find it very relaxing. It transports me to another place. I learnt to cook from my mother, who was a great traditional cook with lots of skills, and I loved being in the kitchen with her. I live with my husband Greg and our two sons, Joe and Oliver. Our kitchen is where we produce the things that bring us together around a meal table. Mama's meatballs. It's a very important part of my house. Voila. Anna Bly, welcome to the MasterChef kitchen. You are, of course, the premier of Australia's fastest growing state and also Australia's only female head of government. And what we want to know is how on earth you get time to cook. We carve out some time, maybe a whole Sunday afternoon cooking something very complicated and then invite friends over. What sort of things do you use in your kitchen? Well, I think when people think about Queensland, they th I hope they think about good, fresh seafood, tropical fruit, great local dairy products, great cheese. It, you know, the yeah. weather means you've got very good fresh vegetables, great quality. Well, it sounds like cooking means a lot to you, so we're looking forward to this. I think it's going to be tough, but um, yeah, I think I've got something to offer. Well, here's the good news. Any of you could win. Here's the bad news. To do it, we're going to make it as hard as possible. <laughs> this is your one and only chance to make it through to the semi-finals. Today's heat is divided into two rounds, and in the first round, we want you to cook your signature dish. The signature dish is obviously something that you've cooked many, many times before, but you need to nail it today here. I think my secret weapon will be my gnocchi. I'm going to make it from scratch, and uh, hopefully that'll impress the judges. Eamon, Anna, Simon, you have 90 minutes to cook a beautiful signature dish. Cook like the world's watching. Your time starts now. I feel a bit nervous. I'm cooking three dishes today. I start with the panna cotta because I have to get it in the fridge and get it set. It's a simple dish. You start by boiling the cream with sugar, put in the vanilla bean, pour in the gelatine, and then get it into the moulds. That's done in 10 minutes. I'm wrapped. <laughs> Anna, how are you going? Oh, getting there. Nervous? <laughs> My nerves have calmed down now that I've started to cook, I have to say. You I'm must feeling be used much to more comfortable. Nerves, mustn't you? I'm very used to dealing with pressure and nerves, but this is a different environment. So tell us what you're cooking. What are the dishes? I'm very keen to show off as much Queensland produce as I can, <laughs> so I'm doing a three-course meal with oh, some wow. favourite things. In 90 minutes? Can you do it in 90 I, minutes? Well, we've made the dessert. It's in the fridge now. It's a panna cotta. Now, what about your main course? Two, you know, wonderful rib fillet steaks yep. with some roast potatoes and a lovely side of asparagus with prosciutto. And then I'm doing a Morton Bay bug salad with a Thai dressing. Well, I'll tell you what, we'd better leave you. You've got a lot to do. Don't want to interrupt you anymore. Hope it all goes well. Good luck. We'll speak to you soon. Don't ever cook the steak. Thank you for that advice. Hey, Min, what are you cooking for us? Making a uh, gnocchi from scratch yep. with wild mushrooms, baby spinach, peas, and a marinated lamb rump and a rosemary jus. Wow. How are you going to cook the lamb rump? To, to um, what degree? Going to seal it and then put it in the uh, oven to medium rare, hopefully. You having fun? Yeah, it's going good. Yeah? Yep, so far. Confident? You're going to win it? I'll give it a crack. You know I'm competitive. Come on, Eamon! Come do on! Got to do it. The potato bake that I'm making is using Dutch cream potatoes. 
I'm going to use Yalbuk cheese and cream. Simon, how are you? I'm good. I'm having fun. What's your signature dish? I'm going to do a butterfly chicken with some buffalo bocconcini and some uh, basil on its side. I'm going to do a, a baked potato, which I've got in. Nice green leaf salad. I'm going to accompany that with some spinach, with bacon, onion, and garlic, yeah. which I'm going to fold through some cream cheese at the end. Where'd you get that idea? I've actually made this up. You made it up? Well, every kid in the world doesn't want to eat green stuff, so that was a challenge to me. Uh, so if you drive the flavour through with the bacon, bacon, onion, and garlic, you can disguise it a bit. Correct, and it has therefore that nice salty kind of bacony feel about it but they're also getting the vitamins out of the green That's at the same great, time. Isn't it? I'm very aware that I'm being monitored and looked at and everything that I do here is being assessed and judged. I hope you don't overcook the chicken because chicken's got this terrible habit, especially when there's no skin on it, going really dry. I thought that I was prepared, but the butterflies were starting to do the la cucaracha in my tummy and the whole master chef phenomenon don't the hit me. Oh, oh. And watch that spinach. I'm not worried, not at all. One hour to go, guys. I feel magic in the room. Hopefully there's magic in those pots. We're excited because we want to taste three fantastic dishes. For the chicken dish, I've put buffalo bocconcini and some basil. I bring them together with some toothpicks. I pan those and brown them. I start on the main, and the first place to start is with the sauce. So heating up the wine with a bay leaf and some shallot, getting that simmering away because I have to reduce it by a third. Meantime, getting some of the meat, carrots and celery into the pan. George, I'm really excited about today. I think we've got three really good cooks in the room. It smells beautiful in here. But Anna, she's got three dishes on the go. She's going to do an entree, main and dessert. Has she bitten off more than she can chew? I look up and I see George and Gary looking over at uh, my kitchen and I think, I bet they're saying I'm not going to make it. And that was an added little, I'm going to show them. <laughs> Gary, Eamon Sullivan, I mean, you know, our super fish in the pool. Will he be able to be super in the kitchen? He's attempting gnocchi. And we know what happens with gnocchi if they're not right. They're like little rubbery bullets. He's also doing a lamb rump. It's probably one of the hardest parts of the lamb to cook because that lamb rump should be just pink. And if it's under that, if it's medium rare, it's chewy. So I think he's he, he's really set himself a challenge. Gary Simon out the back there. He's the dark horse. And, you know, he's showing some good skills there. The way he's butterflied open that leg. Yeah, that... It's popped the bocconcini, skewered it, and he's talking about how to seal it yeah, in the correct good. manner. I think that's, that's quite admirable. And let's see what he does with the rest of the dish. I'm excited. Guys, you've got half an hour to go. Half an hour. Remember, you want to win this round to get every advantage going into round two. Getting the meat out of the bug is always a bit tricky. Shell is really hard. They put up a fight. Gotcha. Clearly, the hero of this salad is the Moreton Bay bug, and I always worry about getting the Moreton Bay bug just right. It's such a delicate meat that if you overcook it, you just ruin it and you can't fix that. So I just very lightly poached it and took it out as soon as I could. So the potatoes are ready. It's really important to get the skin off and use them while they're warm so they stay nice and moist and the gnocchi really binds together. Then I put it through a food ricer, which gives me a really fine, silky texture. This is the part I'm really nervous about. So there we go. Make it all break time. So I try to take my time and try to do it right because I don't have time to boil some more and make it again. It's really important to be careful with the mixture. You really want it to be velvety in texture so that when they bite into it, it's really soft and pillowy. I roll them into thin logs and cut them into small portions ready to be uh, poached and cooked. How are you going? You're going to make it, make it in time? I think so. I think so. What I liked about having Matt around was Matt loves food. And you can watch his face as he's tasting something. Like that? Good. Getting a bit of a sense of what he was interested in. So Matt comes around and starts tasting the dishes. Smells good. Smells good. So he just gives that little eyebrow. And it's scary. It scares me. 
So you've got cheese in three elements. So yeah. The question for me is going to be, how are you going to make it taste light on the palate? I love rich food. I was talking to Matt, and uh, he thought that there was a lot of cheese involved in my dish. It'll look all right on the plate, and I think it's just about those tastes. My response to that was to put more buffalo bocconcini in the salad. Let's just take some risks. OK, big guy, it's about cheese. Let's think outside the square. We're down to the nitty-gritty now. You have 15 minutes to go. Let's pull it together. Plating up and dressing a dish is only an extension of your preparation. Leave yourself enough time to make those finishes and bring us something beautiful. That's perfect. Just finishing plating up the Fulton Bay bugs. Steak has to cook, but they won't take long. And I'm hoping the panna cotta is set. I better go and check that, I think. So the plan was to leave the gnocchi in for three minutes, just until it's risen to the top of the water. But five minutes later, I'm thinking, uh-oh. And it just doesn't look right. It looks a bit tattered around the edges. It's not holding together as well as it usually does. And uh, I start contemplating making some more, because I wasn't happy. I think I have time. I run over to the spare bit I have and I start rolling out some more. So there's five minutes left before you put up the best signature dish you've ever put up in your life. I knew the time was running out. I decided to stick with the gnocchi I've already made and uh, just focus on getting it ready on time and plating it up well. I'm looking at this creation that I've got here thinking, mm, OK, and I'm wondering whether I do the ketchup manis and drizzle the plate or not. I get this smell. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's my sauce burning. I know at this point that, you know, that it may not be salvageable. So I quickly put some stock in it, have a taste. Once it's on the steak, maybe it'll be okay. I had to make the choice, do I put it on or don't I? 60 seconds to go, come on. Remember, we love this bit. This is just before you send the food out to the customers. Is it good enough? Is it right? Let's hope so. Five, four, three, two, one. So it's the moment of truth. The time when we get to see if the dish that you've cooked has the same impact on us as it has on your friends and your family. The first dish we want to taste is Mr. Westaway's. I did my best and whatever feedback I get, I'll take on the chin. That's all I can do. Simon, pleased with yourself? I don't feel as if it was a train wreck, totally. It's just cooked. If you send that out to a customer in a restaurant, the chances are it might get sent back to the kitchen. Honestly, it looks like spew. But it tastes really good. <laughs> I'd eat that as a side dish. Yeah. Potatoes, undercooked, never a good thing. The problem with this dish is you've bolted too many things together. And what we end up with is a Frankenstein. We have enough cheese here to feed Switzerland for a month. Thank you. The next person up to the tasting table is Eamon. 
The nerves were running high, pretty similar to standing behind the blocks for, for an important swim. Very technical dish. Is it a reflection of your skills, do you think? It's a bit of my swimming, I think, transferring over to, to cooking. It's very technical what I do, and I try to make it as perfect as possible. You've cooked it well. It was really lovely and pink when it came out of the oven. What is not working as well is the gnocchi. They're not perfect. They're a little bit bouncy. Great dish. It's a really restaurant quality plating. You'd see people paying great money for that. And you can see them enjoying it. Whether it's good enough, your one dish to beat the three dishes of Anna Bly is another question. Anna, would you like to bring your dishes up to the tasting bench? I spent a lot of time waitressing and working in kitchens when I was younger. I don't know if I could still do it. I used to be able to carry five plates, but that was a while ago. <laughs> Anna, that is impressive. Well done. I'm pleased that I managed to get all three plated, but I'm a bit worried that I've murdered the steak. <laughs> The, the beef, well overcooked, sauce is burnt. This dish here is a bit of a letdown for me. I, I'm not excited by it at all. The lime dressing that you've made is really zingy. It does all the right things. And I'm really pleased that you've cooked those bugs with such attention to detail. They're just cooked, which is perfect. And it tastes beautiful. I'll be happy to demolish all that. That is absolutely dead set, cracking, creamy, rich, very, very good. The question is, do you get judged on what you've done well, or does that one floor Come what the press are obsessed with. Anna, thank you. We have tasted your signature dishes and made a decision. Eamon, what a fantastic effort. A restaurant looking dish, a true reflection of your competitive spirit. Simon, a riot of flavours, strong, it was gutsy. That spinach and cheese concoction. Even though it looked a little different, it tasted fabulous. Thank you. And Anna, how brave! Three dishes in 90 minutes. That's a mum under pressure. And the panna cotta was beautiful. The winner is. Eamon. I'm out on top after Anna and Simon really plated up some good dishes. I am ecstatic. Having won the signature dish challenge, I have the advantage going into the pressure test, and it's good to have the upper hand. The rules are simple. You'll all cook the same dish with the same ingredients with the same time limit. And from those resulting dishes, we will pick the winner that goes through to the semi-finals. To make the pressure test as tough as it can be, We've enlisted the help of one of Australia's top chefs. Please welcome to the MasterChef kitchen, chef, restaurateur and author, Kylie Kwong. I'm Kylie Kwong, chef, restaurateur of Billy Kwong. I really believe that if you love something enough and feel so passionately about it, then all of the techniques will follow. Don't cook with your ego, cook with your heart and be very, very observant. And all of that observation and mindfulness will absolutely come out in the cooking and make your dish taste even more beautiful. 
Carly Kwong, welcome to Celebrity MasterChef. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much for coming. Are you ready? I think so. <laughs> In front of Kylie are four dishes, two main courses with their own side dish. From there, Eamon, you will pick one main course with its side dish that all of you must cook. Kylie, what's Eamon's first choice? Eamon, you have the Billy Kwong signature dish, which is the crispy skin duck with fresh orange sauce, and the side is the sung choy bao of vegetables. Eamon, you ever cooked duck before? A couple of times. There's a lot more cooking involved with this dish, so it looks pretty hard. Kylie, what's the second choice for Eamon? OK, Eamon, we have deep fried whole snapper with black bean and chilli, and we've got Cantonese style fried rice. When Kylie lifts the lid on the fish, I feel happy because I think that will be easier. Eamon, what are you thinking about your second option? Deep frying a whole fish I've never done before. Probably a bit more confident with the rice as opposed to the sancho bao. So it's a tough one. Eamon, which dish do you choose? The deceitful duck or the finicky fish? I think being a competitor and wanting to learn how to cook duck properly. I love duck. Learn from the master. I don't know, I'm going to go for the duck. Well, Eamon, you're the true competitor picking the hardest dish, because that is a hard dish. Well, Kylie, what are the things that could go wrong here and what do they need to look out for? Well, after you've marinated the duck, you steam the whole duck in the steamer until the duck is cooked thoroughly, because that will make the deboning process very easy. If it isn't cooked perfectly, then you're sort of tugging and then you end up ripping the duck and it all ends up in tears. The sung shui bao is all about finely slicing everything, gives it that beautiful, delicate touch. Eamon, Simon, Anna, it's time to do the fun bit. Taste the food. It's like there's a party in my mouth and everyone's invited. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah. That's a great experience. Isn't it? Mm. I can hear the crisp. That's a tall order. The hero of this dish is the sauce, and getting it just perfect is going to be tough. You will get a 90-second lifeline. That means you can call on Kylie to advise you for a period of 90 seconds at any point during that recipe. You can only use your lifeline once. Use that lifeline wisely. So, Eamon, Simon, Anna, head back to your stations and start working out a plan of how you're going to make it through to the semi-final. You have two hours. Cook like you're saving your life. Your time starts now. So time starts and the first thing that goes through my mind is get the duck steaming. It's going to take an hour and 15 minutes. I've never cut the neck off a duck before. Once that's on, I can focus on everything else. First thing to do is uh, to get the peppercorns on the stove with some salt, really release the flavours of that and grind that up in a pestle and mortar and uh, base that on the duck. And fry dry until the mixture becomes fragrant and peppercorns begin to pop. I prepare the peppers in the pan and I feel like they're burning. They haven't popped, but I don't want to burn the bones. And I throw them out. I don't want to be burnt. I start again. I know that if I burn these, it won't work. So I try again, and I'm still getting it wrong. This is a great way to start. And for my third time, I'm saved because George comes over. What's going on? Well, I haven't done peppercorns before. What's in the bin? The peppercorns I'm learning how to do. It's all about, in terms of toasting any type of dry spice, it's about what you can smell. Because yep. you can't really see what's happening in the pan. Once you can sort of get that aromat, well, that's the point where you want to take it. I think we're there. All right, beautiful. Thanks, brother. Trimming the duck and getting it ready to marinate and steam included taking the neck out. The neck really gave me a fight. It was, <laughs> I had to get my hand right into the duck and kept wrestling with it. One stage I thought, I'm going to leave it in there, I can't get it out. <laughs> this neck is giving, not going to give up easily. 
I could feel time slipping away, but I wasn't going to be beaten by that neck. <laughs> Steaming for one hour and 15 minutes. I'm doing pretty good. I feel like I'm flying through the start. The main thing in my mind was getting that duck uh, on and steaming. So I put the duck on and I move my attention to the orange sauce. Anna, how are you going? Getting there. Now, you took a bit of time to get the neck out. Have you left yourself enough time? Because you spent 25 minutes on that first process. You've got two hours to do... That takes an hour and two 15 hours. minutes. Yep. Hour and 15, and 20 yep. minutes to that leaves you, what? Yep. It's got to cool down, cut it. Five, cut ten it. minutes to, to get it cut, and then deboned and fried. Two hours sounds like a long time, but that's not. <laughs> no. You're a little bit slow, Anna, and I hope you're going to have enough time to finish off so the dish. So do I. OK, fingers <laughs> crossed. Good luck. Don't overcook the duck. Next, I wanted to get the sauce ready, particularly after I'd had trouble with my sauce in the first challenge. I wanted to make sure I nailed the sauce. That involved quite a lot of delicate work too, getting the orange peeled just right. Thick enough slices, uh, getting the star anise in. So how do you think they're going? I just felt nervous watching Simon. An interesting technique on the vegetables, he's like he's got a scalpel. Oh, careful. Simon's stressing me out. So Anna's using a knife instead of a peeler. Anna's using a knife instead of the vegetable peeler. That is what gives you that, yeah. that delicacy. Yeah. I'd had such trouble with the peeler. It's a utensil I've never used. I just thought, get rid of the peeler. It's interfering with my head. <laughs> George, for the Sanchoy bow, the knife skills are all important. And why? Because they need to cook quickly. And as Carney said, they need to have this delicacy to it. This one here is uh, Anna's. Yep. Yeah, which she did by hand. She didn't yeah. peel them. So they're a bit thick, a bit this, uneven. That's uh, Simon's. Yeah. Uh, it's back. pretty clumsy, isn't it? It's very He's going to have difficulty putting together a beautiful, delicate Sanchoy bow with, with cuts like that. That's exactly right. And this one... And that's beautiful, that is. He's aiming to this yeah. a really job. He peeled it first. Yep. And then he went in and he Yeah, so what and he's got is first. a really nice, fine, even julienne. Yeah. And you'll get that really delicate crunch. So I finally decided to bring my duck out. I uh, was testing it for probably 20 minutes prior to that, putting the knife in to see if the juice came out clear, but I knew the time was running out. So <laughs> executive decision, it was time to come out, put it in the freezer and move on, fingers crossed. Very tempted to have a peek. <laughs> my duck's not quite ready, and I'm starting to be very impatient about it now checking it more often than I probably should. I'm thinking, that is going to let me down. I think I want to call the duck. It hasn't been on as long as Eamon's. I'm calling the duck. The duck goes in the freezer because to pull the bones out, you have to use your fingers. And if you pull it straight out of the steamer and put your fingers in, uh, you're going to end up in hospital. And I don't need that. I'd never attempted to take bones out of a duck before, so it was all new to me. Shit, now it's getting tricky. This isn't falling off the bone. Simon, you need your lifeline? I call for my lifeline and Kylie comes down. I've got 90 seconds. I don't experience it as coming off the frame like I'd like it to be. If they're not coming out, like, quite easily, then yep. it means the duck isn't cooked. That's why it's a little bit difficult to handle now. So can you be a bit more forceful there? I mean, it's difficult because the duck's hot. No. You're feeling it's not coming out? No, it won't what come out. What you can do? incision there with a knife. So cut it gently rather than ripping it. I mean, look, I might be able to sculpt it off the frame, but it's not cooked meat. Well, just, just wait, because it, once we put it in here, which is piping hot oil, yep. OK, and then you rest it, it could be absolutely perfect okay. as well, all right? So that's OK. And the duck's quite forgiving. It's robust. Yep. There's a lot of fat on it and so on. Keep calm, just be delicate and gentle with the duck, OK? And then it will be good back to you. Brilliant. Thank you very much. I had no idea where the bones were. All I saw was meat and gristle. So I get Kylie over to my workstation to help me out with my duck. Firm but gentle, because you don't want to rip the whole piece apart. That's it. That's Great. fantastic. fantastic. Amy. Well done. Well done. Now, any final questions before we disappear? Yeah, all temperature. For when it's boiling, do you turn it down so it's. No, no, no. Once you put the duck in, it's this sort of volume that's going straight in, so the temperature will drop a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so you want that quite hot. Okay. Time's up, Eamon. Thank you. Best of luck. Thanks, Kylie small bones started to come out very easily but then the backbone wouldn't move so that was the moment when I called Kylie <laughs>
Carly, these peats have come up easily. I'm Perfect. just not sure what to do with this backbone. A little bit of root strength. Okay, stick your thumb under it. Just feel along the bones and then just twist it out. Okay. Easy. Fabulous. See? Beautifully cooked. Now the oil. Should I yes. turn it up before I put the duck in? We've got to flour the duck. Oh, yes, of course. Yep. Okay. Tastes good that so far. That is a flowered duck. Breast side down. Gentle. Careful. Yep. Great. That's beautiful. Lovely. Anna. Great. Time's up. Hopefully you used your lifeline well. Guys, there's less than five minutes to go. Five minutes to make it perfect. I needed to get this duck done as quick as possible. It's certainly a recipe to put one side in at a time. I ended up putting two in just so I could get it done. I was worried that the duck wasn't going to cook as quickly because it would have uh, lowered the temperature of the oil having two pieces in there, but I didn't have any time to spare and I really needed to get that duck on the plate so I can get that Sancho bao on and get it plated up. Ginger. Onion. The second piece of duck, when I took it out of the oil, it had a darker spot on two of the parts, and I thought, that's been in there one or two minutes too long. So I was a bit worried about whether the duck would be a bit dry. I've got five minutes to go, and I've got to get the other wok on, get those vegetables frying. Less than two minutes to go. This is critical. This is where it all counts. I'm very mindful of these vegetables now in the wok, so I'm split between what's going on in the wok and what's going on with my duck. And I've realised that my garlic's just gone a little bit past, but now I've got to put the other things in. Ten seconds to go. Five, four... Lettuce, Simon. Three... Lettuce. Two... One. That's it, guys. Step away from your stoves. Well done. Brilliant job. I'm the first on the long walk to, to the judges now, and I'm feeling a little bit challenged. Uh, these guys live in restaurants, and I'm feeling a little bit anxious now. Why does a bloke like you want to be celebrity master chef? I think cooking's a great thing to learn. I mean, clearly, if you can master those skills, it will be uh, able to serve you well anywhere on the planet. Simon, I think it's time for us to taste. Will you sauce it for us, please? Sure. Good. And I'll just put a star and A's. I liked also, I thought they looked terrific. So I'll attempt without using my fingers, gentlemen. Ooh, yeah. Wow. Gentlemen, voila. What I like about this is the sauce. It's got a nice citrusy acidity and a sweetness to it. I think you've duplicated the, the recipe well. Thank you. What I don't like about it is that the duck is not as crispy as it could be in terms, not as dark, I think, as it could be, and there's not as much Szechuan pepper as Kylie's original recipe. You've just maybe under-seasoned it with the Szechuan. In terms of the Sanchoi Bao, I think there's, there's a lot of bean shoot in there. I think you've used more bean shoot than carrot, and maybe that's because your, your shredding skill isn't fantastic. Here's the thing. Kylie's duck was much darker. Kylie's sauce was darker. But I think if you put that down in front of 80% of Australians, they'd actually love it because it looks so clean and clear tasting. Mm -hmm. Overall, a really good execution. I'm really impressed by that. Gentlemen, thank you, thank you very much. It's now my turn to take my dish into the judges. And I'm feeling a little bit intimidated, uh, simply because when you have three dishes the same, something really has to stand out. And that's a big call when you're all using exactly the same recipe. Did you enjoy today? I love today. It's definitely added to your repertoire. Absolutely. No, this will become a bit of a family staple, I think. <laughs>
First up, presentation. Just looks spectacular. You've got that lovely crisp lettuce in the dark in terms of closely resembling Kylie's. Looks really good. Love the sauce. It's got a nice acidity. It's got a nice sweetness. It tastes fantastic. I think the only negative is maybe that duck's a little bit too crispy. Elements of mine, like around that leg, are a bit dry, but I think you've done a fine job. I could devour that in, I reckon, about nine minutes. <laughs> so that is a fantastic job. I love the sauce. It's got really good punch. The Sancho Bao's really tasty. You've done a really fantastic effort. Thank you. Thank you. I'm walking in with my dishes. I've spent two hours cooking this magnificent thing. But they had those looks on their faces again that could uh, knock the wind out of anyone's sails. So you chose the duck dish. Good decision, bad decision? I think it was a great decision. Oh. I love duck and, you know, this is something that I can see myself cooking in the future and I learned a lot of things today. First of all, I'll talk about the Sanchoi Bao. It's different from everybody else's. And the reason is, is that you've just done these beautiful little strips, this julienne of, of the vegetables. It's very, very finely cut and it's crunchy, it's crispy, it's dextral, and the nice amount of the seasoning that you've got in there. This here is a moment. And I'll tell you why it's a moment. There is no better pleasure when I walk into my kitchen and I see these. Why? because I know every one of my customers loved their food. That is delicious, that is crispy, it's flavoursome, it is a cracker. Keep this as a little souvenir, because it's beautiful, well done. Thank you. I'm gonna say that duck is perfect. I can't actually think of a way you can make it better. It has that lovely crisp skin, you've rendered the fat, it's juicy, it's generously cut, it's a really, really fine dish. Thanks for about let down by those lettuce cups. Next time, get Anna Bly to cut them for you because she does a beautiful job. It's so just a pity that when it comes to the table, my eye is led across to those messy lettuce cups. You may leave the tasting room. Thank you. Thanks, Simon. Eamon, Simon, Anna, we have tasted your dishes and decided on who will go straight through to the semi-finals of Celebrity MasterChef. I think to be named Celebrity MasterChef champion, well, that'd be fun. I haven't even won a chook raffle, so to win this uh, would be a, a feather in my cap. Eamon, when you retire from swimming, give me a call. I'd love to have you in my kitchen. What you produced today was fantastic. That duck was beautiful in flavour. The sauce, the balance was amazing. The julienne of vegetables, wow! Those lettuce cups, they needed a good trimming. They needed to look beautiful. You eat with your eyes. It's very important. Well done. Simon, for a guy that's never cooked duck before, you surprised us, and I'm sure you surprised yourself. The duck was beautiful. The sauce, a little bit too sweet. Your vegetable prep, it needs work. There were some cricket bats in there, baseball bats, some julienne, but that's all right. You did a really good job. You should be very proud of yourself. Thank you. Anna, you are superwoman. That sauce was fantastic. There was lots of star anise and lots of beautiful flavor. The julienne was fantastic. The duck, a little bit overcooked, but overall, well done. Thank you. Only one person can go through to the semi-final. I'm sorry to say, Simon, it's not you. Now that I've been told that I'm not the winner, I do feel a sense of relief. Um, I had a lot of fun, but you don't make mistakes in this show and win. Eamon, Anna, 
Gee, all day, snapping each other's heels. It's been fantastic to watch. Just before the winner is announced, I start to feel butterflies. I'm a competitive person by nature, so of course I want to win this. Eamon. You're going through the semi-final. Well done. Thanks for it, I really can't believe I won. Just came here wanting to learn and, and to cook that dish and to come out on top against someone like Anna, who's had years of cooking experience, was very humbling for me. Eamon, bang! That was a good dish. That is good duck. Well done. Tough technique, well executed, and just simply delicious. Well done, mate. Thank you very much. Anna, that close wasn't far. I thought that you were going to pip Eamon to the post, but you just overcooked that duck a wee bit. It's great to be here, and yeah, I've had a terrific time, and I've learned a lot. Simon, Anna, thank you so much for joining us here in the MasterChef kitchen, but now is the time you must leave. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you later. Bye, Evan. Good luck with the rest thank of you. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> Thanks. I've loved my time in the MasterChef kitchen. It was such a rare treat for me to spend that amount of time doing something I love but time to go home and run the state. Eamon, congratulations. You've secured a spot in the semi-final. Well done. Thank you. I think, uh, yeah, coming in, I, I just thought I'd just try and have some fun, but after starting the first challenge, the competitive juices started flowing, and, yeah, I'm in it for the long haul now. Eamon, we'll see you again very soon. Thank you. Next time... Make it beautiful. Come on, guys. Opening bat, Simon Cadditch's tough taste test. Now, you're at a little bit of a disadvantage, aren't you? I am. I can't smell. Author Wendy Harmer cooks the other white meat. Got some little bunnies. And fashion designer Alex Perry. What do you think of my look? Is there another? Who can impress the best and land a semi-final spot? The winner of today's heat 